last week we talked about the um, over engagement in uh, sexual conduct even within a uh, marriage even within the um, how does it uh, right conduct in sexual conduct between husband and wife is not uh, encouraged because of uh, you know first thing is the body has limits and second thing is we uh, overindulge in this kind of um, attachment you know sensory pleasures and and the attachment to one another is not helping us in gaining any footholds towards the path of enlightenment um, because in the end of the day this will go uh, you know the excitement will go it will settle down and uh, you know everyone if you're lucky you get a very good partner where you can walk with but for the rest of your life however the fact remains we will pass and when we pass we will have to leave each other behind and that pain is very strong especially um, you can observe like from a very old couples that you know separated because of life and death you know and when one couple pass the other couple will not last too much longer and that's the observation all right um uh because you know they have been so used to each other forever for a long time but that's not the main point the main point is this is a fact of life that we do not like to talk about most of the time but we have to face it um all the time you know no one is exempted no matter how powerful you are or how uh, successful you are how healthy you may seem this will come and it will uh, how to say it will happen so the only way we can escape from we can liberate from this uh, endless cycle reincarnation is to uh, is to how to say reincarnation in between life and death without our control you know without ability to control is to gain nirvana no short of that requirement any lower than that does not match the criteria of buddhism that's why i'm saying buddhism is not just simply lighting the incense you know praying for some merits and fortune all this we talk about is just to build up you know make it a better life a temporarily but a better life for us and all this desire and stuff like that we have uh, ultimately cannot help us to get any real resolution it will just be one thing after in another right we finish chasing this we're chasing the other thing chasing wealth chasing power chasing lust chasing beautiful people beautiful things beautiful sounds um, those are not uh, helping us uh, to actually find uh, you know our ground and how do we get out of the six dreams uh, in buddhism it is the least requirement the lowest requirement is to get to arahant which is enlightenment no short of that right to be a qualified buddhist so this is a very high order tall order and if we use that kind of strict criteria a lot of people will not qualify including myself but because buddhist buddha is very compassionate and they created something called um chanting method amitofo that's his vow to make it easier for people like us who cannot by their own discipline who are not disciplined enough who are not uh, of course having a right condition also does not have enough um, mental tenacities to gain enlightenment by our own effort so this is why we have this school of pure land and why this is common amongst everyone because it helps common folks to get there uh, so in Sahawo as we mentioned strongest thing that bound us is our uh, attachments and among all the attachments we have love especially towards your um, kinsmen you know your family your close ones are very strong right husband and wife parents and children you know siblings those are 
we call it beautiful things, but we also think we also understand this objectively as a attachment. That's why Buddha named his son Rahula, basically named his son the chain, uh, to show us that you know this relationship we treat it as natural, but of course it is uh, the the this is how human relationship started. You know, husband and wife, and then becomes parent and children, right? Husband and wife, they have children, and then that's first is husband and wife, then is parent and children, and then expands to siblings, expands to friends, expands to subordinates, and um, and uh, and the boss, you know, boss and subordinates. So this this is the we call it natural order of things in human relationships. However, this is. Um, only in the very narrow spectrum, right? Only in the spectrum of human experience. We talk about uh, enlightened beings who see things more than one lifetime. We see, you know, things from the very beginning and to the very end for every single existence. Different people has different journey to get there. And this is what why it's important to have something like Buddhism in this world. It's breaking the boundaries and the perspective, the horizon for many people, including people who already have religious beliefs. It expands their horizon to help them improve, to get beyond, you know, this cycle. Because if we just merely aiming to go and enjoy the worldly pleasures or even heavenly pleasures, which is still worldly pleasures, you know, the, the, the criteria is very high. You know, worldly ple- pleasures does not just refer to human it also refers to heavenly beings, you know, even as high as the, you know, with formless realm where they uh, do not have thoughts or their thought is very quiet. Um, they have a very long life and they have no bodies, no shape, no form. Formless realm, form realm and desire realm, which is where we are. So back to the topic at hand, last week I mentioned about why we call desire realm. Because, we, you know, why do we have male and females? The only desire realms have male and females. And going above desire realm, form realm, they only have a body, a shape of body. You know, they are, they are not, um, they do not have genders. There's no need for genders. There's no need for sexual reproductions. They do not need this kind of engagement to produce uh, offspring. They just naturally grow like, a little bit like Pure Land where they have flowers open up and people just appear from there because it's pure uh, the lowest level of form realm is called the Brahman Brahman heaven basically where people practice non-sexual desires and uh, they do not con- uh, commit any sexual desires uh, their thought is able to suppress the sexual desires they might not they are not able they have not severed it but they have able to um not suppress it more like how does it keep it under wrap with the power of meditation right that's our full fun now boost one fun now right they able to keep it under wraps with the power of meditation that is not an easy meditation they need to experience uh, they need to go through a lot of you know experiences uh, you know the body sensations the mind situations to a certain level before they can reach that state of the world because everything arises from our heart all phenomena arise from our heart and of course if your heart is pure your world will be pure so back in our desire realm where everyone has desires of different scale of different different appetites so to speak see we use food to describe things really desire this food and that food and you can make it into you know lust after one another you know woman and man or man to man woman to woman so these things are all desires right and if it's unchecked right humans are called humans because they have five precepts of preserving their integrity do not allow the desires run rampant but if you observe the conducts of many people you know including ourselves sometimes our thoughts not just action the thoughts as well it's already breaching the standards you know the five precept standards no killing no stealing no sexual misconduct which is what we're talking about no um, lying uh, and the lying refers to you know I have gained enlightenment I'm a Jesus come again that kind of lying 
Uh, last one is no uh, intoxicants, drugs, you know, all sorts of things that muddles your mind. So those five things are not thorough, but they are the basic criteria. And a lot of us, including, you know, reflecting in ourselves, have we breached it, right, in action, and then second level, have we breached it in mind. Sexual misconduct or sexual conduct, this is a, a, a desires, right, including, uh, you know, action. But this is not restricted to action. Thoughts. If our thoughts do have that desire, no matter, even though you don't do anything, you didn't touch anything, right, but your mind's still playing that again and again, you know, the, 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 the desires, the sexual desires and conducts, it's not, um, how do I say, it's, it's not helping us to get out of six rooms. Well, I'm talking about that kind of criteria, right? Of course, in the worldly perspective, you know, the normal husband and wife relationships, that's fine. Uh, even that has to let go eventually because, you know, how many times can you have? And then after that, you need to, you know, lighten that, um, that, 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 that thing will lighten out, you know, and eventually becomes taking care of children and, you know, responsibilities. Of course, you can have that to spice up marriage that is within your rights and, and it's good, right? It's helpful, but um, since we in contact with Buddhism, right, we could not allow ourselves stuck to that level of pleasure. Like I already, I already mentioned, bodhisattvas, right? The way they derive pleasure or so-called pleasure, in 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 essence, the the way they achieve, uh, how to say, peace of mind, happiness, because ultimately pleasure. Why we seek pleasure? We want to be happy. Why why we why we want to be happy? Because we don't want to suffer. The absence of suffering is happiness in this, in our standard. But for bodhisattva, they do not suffer anymore because they no longer bound by their they no longer mud, um, confuse of their conducts they understand the cause and effect thoroughly you know from the back of their hands and they understand what to do what not to do what kind of consequences when they do something and if that can be avoided they avoid it so the way they derive so-called pleasure or the way they derive peacefulness, blissfulness, joyness is from meditation. Why? Because they're able to uh, be free from the body. You know, 90% of all these problems, issues is because we have a body, right? This is like Taoist text, right? Even Taoists themselves, the, the Lao Tzu, the founder, already mentioned, I have a greatest trouble at present, that is, I have a body. I have a biggest disease at the moment. That is the disease of having a body. This body smells if I don't wash for five days. This body have hungers if I don't eat. This body desires touch, which is where sexual desire came in. This body desires stimulations, you know, pleasures from the touch, the contact, also like smooth stuff, all right? Han Si Hua, right? Smooth and fine things, you know, silk and all that, all right? Um, the tongue taste desires the five tastes, you know, spiciness, saltiness, sweetness, right? Um, umami, whatever, etc., etc. The eyes desires, you know, beautiful things, beautiful people, you know, good-looking people, bad-looking people. Uh, it desires anything that is pleasant to the eye, you know? We can say myself included or trying to make ourselves like this and that so i'm not trying to say oh we all should just you know be monk and go and hide uh, be ascetics and all that uh that's not practical it, if someone can do that we need to praise them it's not easy that's why it's, it's to be praised because it's so very hard to not be controlled by your body's desires and uh, put it another way the driver no longer drives the car, rather the car drives the driver. So it's very funny, you want to use the car to reach the destination to, you know, get what you want and what you need. But in the end of the day, the driver no longer drives, they just sit there idle and the actual, the car itself goes wherever it likes. Like, or, or yeah, like a wild horse running amok, you know, without 
uh, riders doing anything. The riders are just being passive, sitting there doing nothing because they they are not aware of themselves. They're not aware of these relationships, you know. So our relationship, our body is very tenuous. You know, it desires all this pleasure and all that. And if we just follow it without thinking, without allowing ourselves to slow down and reflect on it, hence we become animal. That's why there is animal realm. That's why you scold people, you're a dog, you're a beast. All right? Some some even use that as a praise. Oh my God, you're such a dog, man. You know, you're a wolf. But it's not a praise if you think about it, right? Those animals, why are they animals? Look at them. Do they have any sense of shame? Some of them has very few exceptions. Very intelligent, of course, but in general, look at all these daily domestic animals, dogs, animals. Do they have any distinction when they conduct sexual misconduct? Sexual conduct, they don't. They don't distinguish between family and non-families. You get my idea. It's disgusting for from our human eyes. So from a heavenly beings' perspective, they look at us, they also feel disgusted as well. Right? When we eat, you know, all the poops coming out, all that, bian uh, kui. So that's why pure when you read the sutra, you understand after eating, there's no, there's no excrements because there's nothing to eat. It's just a habit. So Buddha's trying to slow down, try to ease yourself away from this attachment to the body, to ha- the concept of having a body. Um, but I don't want to go too far on that. So back to this point. Um, but here, it does not talk about you know, that level where you want to be arahant. Okay, that, that means you sever your um, desires, sexual desires. You know? But we need to mention that because going to Pure Land in there, it's like the Pure Land as closest to, from our perspective is the form realm. That's why Buddhist cosmology is, is very important. To, to understand basics before we touch you know the the actual concept of you know pure land and actually practicing towards it why do we even need to practice towards it um, because form realm is based on no gender that means all this argument about sexual orientations or gender does not exist there doesn't have to there's no there's no basis for it to happen there's no need to derive pleasure from it they replace with meditative pleasure uh, it's still a joy, it's still attachment, but it's a lighter attachment. Uh, Buddhist practice do not tell you to stop yet, meditative pleasure. But first step of overcoming this, you know, sexual desire is to replace it with something purer and yield even better. Uh, it's a, the purer form of pleasure, in a sense. You know, that's why when people reach, when you see someone meditate for a month, two months, three months, they don't eat, right? Eat, food and sexual conduct works together, you know? Confucius says having food, having uh, the uh, relationship between man and woman is num- two big things in human realm. Yin shi nan nu ren da yu chun yi, right? Yin shi food, nan nu, man and woman, or, you know, sexual conduct in nowadays is sexual conduct. These two are the huge, biggest thing uh, in the forefront of human's mind, right? When your belly is full, you think about doing sexual conduct, you know, to pleasure yourself. So, so understand our structure, our fun, our how our human world works, you know, in 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 a general terms, will allow us to have a bigger perspective. You know, how do we navigate ourselves out of this? You know. Because otherwise you just, if if you just allow yourself to, to stack stuck there, it will not stay the same level. It will get worse and worse because you you will do more. You want to seek more excitement. Yu hai wu ya, right? Shen yuan, right? Desire is a bottomless hole. It's like a black hole. It does not stop there. You want more excitement. You know, like 100 years ago, we were happy by just looking at opera. Now we feel like this is an ancient thing and it's, it, it's int- interesting to do it once in a while, but we need more because we're so used to this input. We want more excitement, so we have TV. TV now is not enough. We have uh, what? We have this smartphone. Smartphone is not enough. In future, we might even have the AR, 
you know, VR or virtual realities. You know, your whole perceptions, your five senses is um, like wearing a headset, right? Your eyes was in there. You have the perception of you in a different world. Right? That's not enough. In future, they might even do something to your brain. You saw a lot of, um, we might watch a lot of um, science fiction, right? But this might not be the fiction fiction. You know, it could happen. They do something to your brain where you just immerse yourself entirely into a different world. It's fun. It's exciting, right? We go to Pure Land, same thing. But we, we, we go there and we actually enhance our existence. This one is there. You're lying to yourself. It's like t- asking yourself, oh, okay, this is not real, this is not real. But you're still stuck in six dreams. So so think about that, right? Um, to elevate our existence, we need to, uh, we need to start working towards that direction. I cannot, I cannot be, because uh, I myself am trapped in this as well. But we need to set our sight, our goal in the right direction out of six ribs there's very lowest lowest standard in Buddhist teaching all right falling short of that means that we need to go on with a lot of re- reincarnation just to get the idea and then from there we need to work towards that idea of getting out of six ribs it takes in a lot of other lots of reincarnation again you know to get through all these dramas up and down from human to heaven from heaven to hell and then back to human uh, maybe in between we might become animal might become hungry ghosts you know we talk about buddha stories my all these histories where these um, great monks and buddha himself how far he has to travel before he came to this conclusion for them the conclusion means that they no longer be full they're no longer ignorant. So moving forward, everything they do, everything they see and uh, uh, act, they are in full control. So they, they can appear as anyone doing same thing as anyone, but they are full, fully controlled. The driver is driving it. It's just trying to bring other people to the path of enlightenment, nirvana. Right, to get across these seas of sufferings. A lot of metaphors, I know. But the whole point is to, 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 to give us the um, hope and also the method to get out of it. And, but we need to bring out that sort of mindset um, if you want to do that. 